Sometimes I snooze on tech news, but don't get confused. TechLinked will sink your mind to the enthusiast kind and fast forward, not rewind, through the tropic topics. That's the hottest, but that doesn't mean they're not cool. So don't snooze on tech news, choose to peruse. The specs for NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 50 series Blackwell GPUs have allegedly already leaked, thanks to reliable tipster Kopite 7 Kimi, which is how I will pronounce it, always. Kimi has claimed the cards will be based on the GB202 and GB203 GPUs. I don't know what their opinions will be, but we'll see. The latter is expected to be a cut down version of the former with half the number of cores. On top of that, the cards may be the first to feature GDDR7 memory. Specifically, the memory speed will cap out at 28 gigabits per second, which is lower than the published specifications for the next gen memory, but still faster than GDDR6X's maximum speed. This detail seems the most solid while Kimi has seemed to flip-flop on memory bus width. The tipster now says the GB202 will sport a 512-bit memory bus, but previously hinted it would come with the same 384-bit interface the 4090 has. But if all this gaming GPU news tricked you into thinking that Nvidia cares about those again, I'm sorry, AI is still Jensen's favorite child. CEO Jensen Huang has implied the company's next gen DGX AI servers will be liquid cooled, perhaps to deal with extra heat due to increased power consumption. Now, this wouldn't be the only hot water Nvidia's AI has created. Team Green is being sued by three authors who claim their copyrighted works were used without permission to train the company's Nemo AI platform. With this lawsuit, Nvidia joins the list of AI companies sued for copyright infringement. Companies like every other AI company. It's a rite of passage, really. AGI will emerge from the fire. <laughs> of being sued constantly. From Team Green over to Team Red now, AMD has made major changes to the FreeSync certification process. In a community announcement, the company stated they would be increasing the required maximum refresh rate a monitor needs to support in order to be FreeSync certified. Originally, monitors and TVs only needed a maximum refresh rate of 40 to 60 Hertz to get a basic FreeSync stamp but now the minimum certification requires at least a 144 Hertz maximum refresh rate. Meanwhile, FreeSync Premium certification used to just require a monitor that can go up to 120 Hertz, but now that's only true for displays with horizontal resolutions of 3,440 pixels or above. TVs or monitors below that resolution must have a maximum refresh rate of at least 200 Hertz. The Premium Pro has also changed to match premium, but with the added criterion of HDR support. Now these might sound like huge and confusing changes, but they really just reflect today's most common refresh rates in desktop gaming monitors. It's super common now to find budget gaming monitors at 144 Hertz. But no matter what monitor you're running, AMD's new upscaler for non-game, just video content could be welcome news for you Radeon RX 7000 users out there. It's basically Team Red's answer to Nvidia's RTX VSR, but apparently it's a bit more complicated to set up. Not only do you have to enable it in AMD's adrenaline control panel, but you also need to enable options in Windows 11's settings app and additional settings in Chrome and Edge if you wanna use it in one of those browsers. As for other browsers, AMD didn't mention them. Firefox, what is that, some sort of cryptid? It's friends with the Insulindian Phasmid. About five people will get that. And Apple will be releasing next-gen iPad Pros and Airs in the next month. According to the germ in the Apple, Apple will not have a launch event for their Mac and iPad updates because the Vision Pro is all that matters now. Previously, it was rumored that Apple would simply put out press releases on its website last week, but that doesn't seem to have happened. While we wait for those products, we can perhaps also wait for a new Apple Headset. Oh, insiders like Gerben have claimed we might see a cheaper alternative to the Vision Pro in 2025 or 2026. But according to a leaker called Revegnus, sounds like a Sith Lord. According to that leaker, Apple is accelerating research and development on an entry level headset. 
The leaker claims Apple is trying to reduce the cost of their headset displays, which account for almost a third of the Vision Pro's total manufacturing cost. Allegedly, the second generation headset could cost $1,500, which is a bargain on Apple's pricing scale. But before that allegedly happens, the AirPods Pro may be getting a major new hearing aid mode with iOS 18, according to Mark Gurman again, he's back. A 2022 study already suggested AirPods work competently as a cheaper alternative to a traditional hearing aids. So how can they get better? Will they cure hearing loss in some weird partnership with Mr. Beast? Implant your AirPods directly into your skull. <laughs> Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Delete Me. Ever Googled yourself and found your private information just floating around out there? Gross, not cool. It can lead to annoying calls, dodgy emails, and even identity theft. But fear not, Delete Me's got your back. Their tech whizzes and expert team will boot your info off sketchy people search sites. No need for you to waste hours sorting it out. Delete Me's got it covered. Plus, they'll send you personalized privacy reports showing what they found, where they found it, and what they nixed. Ready to kick your personal info out of the web spotlight? Head to joindeleteme.com slash techlinked and use code techlinked for a sweet 20% off. Quick bits are like a little kiss of summer in the spring, a flashlight in the fog, a Sunday morning pajama. Reddit and its current shareholders would be offering a total of 22 million shares, optimistically for around $34 each, and the rest is, as they say, basic grade school math. Who says that? Around 1.76 million of those shares have been set aside specifically for Reddit users who joined prior to January of this year, because everyone else is just free riding. The company is reportedly targeting a valuation of close to six and a half billion dollars, which is honestly a bit more than I'd be willing to pay for it. 20 bucks, take it or leave it. You'd be lucky if anyone pays you more than 20 bucks for that thing. Oh, Xiaomi is removing a popular feature that allowed users to play YouTube videos in the background on their Android-based operating system without subscribing to YouTube Premium, thus avoiding paying Google money. That's how that works. Google, who actually quite likes money, is suspected of having pressured Xiaomi into removing the feature. Though Xiaomi only said that the changes were due to unspecified compliance requirements. Specifically, compliance with the back of Google's hand. Slap, slap. Google leaked the Pixel 8a's existence in the most on-brand way. In Android 14's QPR1 update, Google added extended battery statistics that allowed users to see charging cycle counts and manufacturing dates for their phone's battery. However, this feature disappeared in an update this month. When a user reported this as a bug, a Google representative stated that existing devices were never meant to get this feature, so they removed it, saying, we only enable this page on Pixel 8a and beyond. Oh, oh that'll be on the Pixel 8a. No! Sorry, Android users. You may have lost a feature, but your sacrifice has allowed Google to justify yet another phone launch. A mod has been released that gives NVIDIA RTX 20 series and GTX 16 series GPUs support for resizable bar, a performance enhancing feature that lets your CPU access your GPU's entire frame buffer, as long as your motherboard says it's okay. Mom! Isn't there someone you forgot to ask? That's actually not a joke. Rebar only works if the motherboard, CPU, and GPU all support it. So. Using this mod, which is based on another mod adding rebar support to older processors, involves patching your motherboard's UEFI firmware. Now that's always a little risky, but what is life if not a continuous sequence of taking one risk after another? This is not an endorsement. Do not sue us. We're not an AI company. If Riley jumped off a cliff, would you? <laughs> and that's just a question. And Porsche has unveiled the Taycan Turbo GT, its fastest road legal car ever, and it proved it too, by setting a new record for a production EV car at the Laguna Seca track in California. Linus is so sad, he went back to driving his Lambo out of shame. In addition to more range and faster charging, the new Taycan got a bonus in the form of a Tim Cook appearance in its announcement video. He congratulated Porsche CEO Oliver Bloom on the launch and on the Porsche Vision Pro app that lets you spectate races from various perspectives. I hope CEO's pinching the air becomes part of every major product release going forward. It just makes everything more exciting. I think it's called carcinization, where everything starts turning into crabs. <laughs> oh no, I'm becoming a crab. <laughs>
As you know, we're releasing a product. But there's nothing more exciting than coming back on Wednesday for more tech news. Nothing! <laughs> nothing!